Hello everyone. Thank you so much for dropping by. What we have today is Armageddon War. That came in from Flying Pig Games. And I'm super excited to show you what came in the box. So just a quick move of the camera here. Came in a hefty box. I, I pre-removed all of the popcorn packaging. That's like my daughter's favorite part, but then that's the part that's most difficult to always clean up. Because she likes to swim in the box. And she's making noise so she can be heard. Alright, well I'm going to pull stuff out. Now first of all, this happened... I know this happened in, in Old School Tactical 2, maybe happened in other games, but check your packing foam. One... Honey, don't yell. No yelling, honey. Because it's annoying. Thank you, sweetie. Uh, so first, check your packaging. Check all the popcorn. Because as I was scooping out handfuls of popcorn, there was my dice. These dice are actually special, I'm going to say like a special edition dice. With the Kickstarter, I think there was a pledge level. I don't have all the pledge levels in front of me. But uh, with one of the pledge levels, I believe you are, we're going to get the, the extra dice. These dice are for sale separately on the uh, Flying Pig website in case you missed out on the Kickstarter. What they are, they're, they're actually replacement dice that you would throw into your, your dice mix. And they have additional symbols. I haven't quite learned yet what all the additional symbols are. So that's something that will come later. Had to go grab a pair of scissors and get the daughter a drink. So that would let me open this. These cards right here that I'm opening, I don't know if these are for sale on the website. Yeah, we had just talked about the dice. So these are some dice with additional combat results. They would just replace dice that you have in your pool so you could use them. But like I said, I'd have to go and check. I didn't see, uh, I th we'll, we'll see where the rules are for these, what the additional symbols are. That might be in one of our other packages. Now, besides the dice, then you got these cards. Now, these cards I actually thought were very, very cool. What it is, this kind of gives you some, um, I'm going to say like uh, organization, if you will, of units. So like, for example, I'm probably pronouncing these wrongs, but this R, then it says like it's uh, comprised of two Merkava 4Ms. So I guess like like two sections of Merkava 4Ms. But this kind of gives you an idea of what comes in the different uh, units that we have. So there's Sa'ar, 45th Guards, uh, Nasrallah, the Shadadeh, Shadadeh, Pulsar, 99th Armor, Al Musawi. Again, I'm probably saying stuff wrong. I, I apologize. Uh, Saleh, Surda Yaakov, Yaakov. 90th Mech, Rick's Raiders, I can pronounce that, Al Zawahiri, 696th Rifle, 15th Special, 369 Armor, Al Mansur, 481st Anti Air, 10th Squadron, 3 4 Squadron, Gideon, 440th Helicopter, uh, the Badr Militia, and one th one three sixth Infantry. Uh, so again, just organizational templates, which I just thought were very, very cool, just to kind of let you know what makes up these specific groups. And all of these counters are represented in the game, so this kind of gives you an idea of what to expect. Not, I don't, I don't think they're, just for those curious, I don't think they're necessary for gameplay. But as a completionist, I think they're very cool to have. And, you know, depending on how you want to organize your equipment, this might be a great way to help you organize your counter trays and things like that. All right, so we'll set those aside. So you got those cards. I'm reaching into the box. So let me grab the next item. Next item I'm pulling out that we have, we were given the Alone in the Desert expansion. I should probably raise the camera up a little bit here. So here's Alone in the Desert. It comes with a pack of cards. We'll go ahead and take a look at those. 
So I'm opening the baggie. So this comes in a baggie. This one is not a boxed set. And I'm guessing then that if you were to purchase this from the website, this will also come in a baggie. But you get a deck of cards and you have here a scenario booklet and rules and a counter sheet, which I was not expecting a counter sheet, but it has here aggressive, it says aggressive, cautious, defensive, and it's got some additional vehicles. It does have objective one, objective two, <clears throat> and the counters look exactly like normal counters. So this, this is something I wanted to share about the solo game. And we'll talk more about this when we do like just individually the solo game. This system allows you to play all the scenarios with the solo system. So it's not limited to just these scenarios. All right. So I just wanted to share that. And I think that's a very cool thing to do. All right. So you get the solo system with counters, your instructions here, and a very good full color book with examples. Looks like an example turn, and then bam, right into the solo. So it does come with some specific solo. But um, yeah, from what I remember, from what I remember, you could play any any of the game with this. That's what I remember. I could be wrong. Somehow, in my mind, that's what the, the deal was. Because the cards, I think what you would have to do, let me see the mission layout here. Let me check something real quick here. Uh, basics, you can play Armageddon War as a solo game. There are six scenarios to run through, plus guidelines on applying the solo rules to some of the two-player scenarios in the basic game. Okay, so, again, we'll hit that in detail. So, yes, there's rules on how to play your two-player game as a solo game. All right, fantastic. Solo edition. That's going to speak volumes to our solo players right there. You don't have to be stuck with just like a handful of scenarios. You can play all of them, plus ones that you create. Then we have the strategy guide. This is this is also good. Um, we'll just flip through this real quick. Maybe we'll come back and look at this more in depth. But this is, I think, I think the the idea was the strategy guide actually is very popular. We started this with uh, old school tactical one and two, and I think the popularity we just carried it on through here to Armageddon War. But it's nice because in a way, <clears throat> in a way you can think of this as like an extended designer notes and it goes into, you know, some of the mechanics, theories, ideas behind the mechanics, why you would do certain, certain things, uh, how to take advantage of some of the different, the different troop types. The game is more, more complex, has some more options than say our other games and so this is going to give you some ideas on how to play the different factions and maybe take advantage of some of those situations. You know, like, when should I run, or when should I stay, or when should I fire back, as far as, like, combat options. And then it's got some tactics here. Then it does talk into the limits. This is another nice thing, too. When we get into the actual Armageddon War base box, and you look at the rules, there's a section in there that uh, Greg Porter does a really good job explaining some of the things that are realistic or believable in the game, and then why some of the design decisions, I can't even speak, why some of the design decisions make it so, you know, you might say, well, why couldn't I just put a thousand troops in here? And a lot of it is just for gameplay, you know, limitations. So the strategy guide, again, has some more insight to that. Uh, very, very good stuff to read. So if you pick this up, I, mean, I highly recommend that you get this. If you didn't do the Kickstarter, I, I would recommend that you pick this up just to get some more insight behind this, like behind the scenes. So there you go. We got a strategy guide. Oh, I didn't even open up the solo cards, did I? Well, we'll save that completely for when we do like a specific thing on the solo system. But here's a card, and this is why the cards work pretty good with the system overall and not limited to say, you know, just the solo expansion or burning lands, it, it can be worked with uh, all of the, the scenarios, is the cards in a way are pretty, pretty generic. And so you assign the stances to the, the units and then based on if it's armor and then the stance of that particular unit, it kind of gives you an idea of how they're going to perform. So even though I use the term 
<clears throat> generic, uh, you know, it has very specific uses. It's, it's a really clean and simple system. And like I said, we'll cover that in more detail later. All right, what else we got? I'm just grabbing in here. Oh, yeah, this was an additional. I remember Mark was going to add this. This was a additional campaign, the 600. And if I remember, it's... There's like 600 troops trapped behind enemy lines, and so the campaign is for you to go and rescue them, if I remember right. Uh, it says it's persistent campaign. Yes, persistent in the sense that the outcome of one skirmish affects the following battles. Very, very cool. And let's see here we got, there, it just jumps right into scenarios. There's five right there, at least six. And then a reference sheet, and then it's got scenario rules there at the end, and another terrain combat reference chart. So awesome. Yeah, this was, I don't remember if this is like one of the add-ons, if we, we did like, you know, a certain amount of tweets or Facebook shares or something like that. I don't remember if this was like a, a social goal, but I do remember that we, we nailed that. And so uh, it was very cool. I think these were scenarios written by Mark. Uh, yeah, I think I think this was a campaign put together by Mark. I'm sure I'm sure Greg Porter helped in that as well. All right, and then I'm grabbing. I'm guessing a little poster. Yeah, it's a poster. This is. Let me tell you why. I I'm very happy to have this. And when I go to Origin, I'm gonna go. And uh, I don't know if Greg Porter will be there, uh, but uh, I definitely want to at least get Mark Walker to sign that. Uh, because when I first saw this game come up on the Flying Pig website, this this game was on their website for a very very long time before the Kickstarter happened, and I I don't know what it is, but I think that is just the coolest picture for a war game cover. I, I know not everybody will agree with me, but I just thought that was a really slick drawing and so to have that as a poster I'm gonna put that up in the war room and we'll get Mark to sign that and if I can I don't know maybe I can figure out how to send that to Greg and have him sign it too alright so then here's the base box oh this is huge this is big oh I have to raise the camera up let me raise this real quick I had to really prop up the tripod legs here so we could fit the entire box into the picture. We'll actually open this as a separate product. I just wanted to, to grab this out of the box because it was next in line. So Greg Porter Design, Mark Walker Game, and so here's the box. And this is huge. I'm Without grabbing one, maybe I'll, I'll grab one when I do a full opening, but I'd say this is... Uh, old school tactical site. This is a huge box, and I believe it's because it's going to have another really large map as well. Uh, let me flip it over. And the and the base game is heavy. It's heavy. We also have a scan me. I think the scan me takes you to the Flying Pig uh, website. I think it takes you right to <clears throat> the website for the game. What do we got there? Each game includes two mounted maps, four sheets of gorgeous die cut one inch counters, including Israeli, Americans, Russians, militia, RPG 29s, equipment, such, so forth, a full color rule and scenario book. The scenarios in the rule book are together, it's not two separate books. There's player aid cards, 18 color dice, and it says ages 14 up, two players or one if you get the solo expansion, playing time one to three hours. And that's actually pretty accurate. So. Like most games, depending on the scenario you play, yeah, you could be done in an hour or so. You know, and then the, the bigger the game, the more complex, the more units you have, it takes longer to play. And then, if I did it right, this is the last item. This is the Burning Lands expansion box. So it is a little bit smaller, but this also has a, a map, scenarios, and counters. And we'll have a separate opening for that as well. And I, I think just because it has uh, <clears throat> fewer items, I think that's why the box overall is a little bit smaller. So the base game, you know, can, contains everything you need. And then this is just going to have the additional stuff to play uh, the additional scenarios that you have. So again, expanding your game. And 
yes, you can play the solo system with this as well. And I'm just gonna just gonna say real quick, that's why I'm so excited to get into the solo system. Uh, there are companies that put out solo games, and I know uh, Flying Pig Game like 65 Night of Man. They had like a solo system, but the system really mostly works with just the included solo scenarios. So this is a treat, even amongst other war game companies, where the solo system works with every scenario. That's rare. I know there's a couple companies that do it, but I also know there's some companies where their solo system is limited to just what comes like with the solo box. Uh, so this is very cool. So with that in mind, that's the contents of the Kickstarter box. All right, so you can use this as a reference, see if you're missing anything. And if you are missing anything, contact orders at flyingpiggames.com. They can check on it. That being said, your packages may still be on, on route to you, in route, in route. Uh, Canada, looks like a lot of people in Canada are already getting their packages. Um, a couple folks in the States have theirs already, uh, myself included, but that's because uh, they were, they expedited me a, a box and then like Mark Walker got his, his publisher copy and whatnot, but it is on the way. As far as the rest of the world, I don't have specific delivery dates for Europe or Asia to include Australia. I know that those have all reached their shipping hubs as well. So it is on the way. And so I don't want this to be a rub it in your face, but I want this to be a look at all the goodness that's coming to you, uh, when you if you did your Kickstarter. And if you did pre-order, pre-orders will be shipped as well, which might not include all of the extra Kickstarter bonuses, but you know your base game and your expansions will be coming to you as well, all right? So with that in mind, we're gonna stop this uh, overall view of things. And we're going to go ahead and start up another video and open up the main box and talk about that. All right, thank you so much, everyone.